use a piece of 2x4 to prop up the supercharger. First, going to remove the lid. And we do that with each of these M8 10 millimeter. <laughs> All right, so this car has 13,000 miles on it. We're going to remove the cover, and as we can see, it's saturated with oil in here. This you do not want. This is causing detonation and knock retard. Less fuel economy, less power, and over time, this oil will bake onto the fins of the intercooler bricks and begin to obstruct and clog them as well. And this is what we're looking to avoid. Nothing good comes from this oil all sorts of uh, old wife's tales out there that somehow that oil is good for the valves. Uh, it is not poking on the valves. You do not want, you do not want uh, any oil adhering to the rotors of the supercharger itself because that will bake on as well and cause them to become unbalanced, which increases wear on the bearings and shafts. Nothing good comes from oil being ingested in the intake air charge. And this is all coming from the valve located underneath this bypass. is drawing that oil in. Now, again, you do not want to vent or put a breather or anything like that on the system that's going to break this closed evacuation system. With fresh air going into both valve covers, metered by the mass airflow sensor, because it eventually becomes part of the combustion process. And we're evacuating the foul vapors out, the valley bar, which is protruding underneath the throttle body from the valley cover on the passenger side front. So our next step is we're going to release tension on the belt.
loose. Everything should be able to stay how it is. Yeah, we'll be taking all of those out 10 millimeter again, that right there. Nope, right here. supercharger and then slide this in so we can access the PCB valve. Ready on three. One, two, three. Yeah. Ready to get your Okay. Got it? So, Got it? I think that'll work right there. Okay. Yep. All right. Now, now I think we're in here. What we're removing is plastic cartridge right here. Okay, this is the stock PCB cartridge. It is a PCB valve in here, and this has a fixed orifice, and then this allows the crankcase vapors to be pulled up through the bottom of the supercharger and bring that oil directly in. What we do is we have a billet piece with the proper size fixed orifice and as you can see there's no openings here so we're sealing that off and then this will be what we connect our hose to to come out and go to the rest of the system. So instead of this going directly up into the supercharger we're bypassing it to go through the catch can. We're also going to put a little grease on the O-rings so that they slide in there cleanly and don't roll off the groove. Now we cut off just a little bit of that barb so that this will swing around. You're going to tighten it until it faces in this direction to be able to hook your hose to it. Turn it until the threads are all the way in, just like this original one was, and end up with the barb facing in this direction. And then we can route our hose to come out and go to the can. want to make sure this is tight. Once that's tight, I'm going to make sure it's going to clear. So we're going to spin this so it ends up in that position right there. Now this will allow the supercharger to come down. And we gotta make sure we're not interfering with the belt. So we can tuck it right in like this, and that should give it for us. So what we've done is center the can to the diverter that we put in uh, on the valley. We have one outlet from the can with the check valve flowing away. There are arrows on the check valve, but always blow through them to ensure they're working. It's going to a T we installed on our vacuum source. Vacuum has to be behind the throttle body. This works great. Uh, second outlet, check valve flowing away directly into the coupler right in front of the throttle body opening itself. This is going to provide added evacuation suction when needed the most at wide open throttle full boost. So, and now we just have to put the cover on 
and clean up and we're good to go.